Pawanji has also paid a great tribute to the legal team that defended not just me but the entire nation against the onslaught of executive power run amok. For those present and absent, including my dear late brother Aris Christopher Fernando, who had a hand in the trial, and particularly the lawyers, words cannot convey the deep gratitude that I, Aziza, family and friends have for their work, which I might, I might add is not yet done. There's a saying that when the law is subjugated to chisonary, chisonary of politics, that is, where judges are subservient to the political masters, the administration of justice becomes both farcical and perverse. In a real democracy, the use of judicial high-handedness to bring down a political opponent won't be tolerated because of the existence of a transparent court system and a process of accountability. In a shame, shame democracy, however, judicial high-handedness is given free reign and transparency is irrelevant. Another popular term used in the first trial, irrelevant. <coughs> there are now a few other high-profile cases pending. For example, the persecution of Raja Petra will certainly be top on the list of the study on the breakdown of the rule of law. I emphasize the word persecution because the manner in which he is being hounded is no longer prosecution, but sheer audacious use of blatant state powers in order to bring down one of the most popular critics of the government. Instead of being the ultimate guardians of our liberty from executive tyranny, the, ju the judiciary is then transformed into principles in the destruction of the very process it was entrusted to, power, to protect. Indeed, the undermining of judicial independence by political interference has negative repercussions not only on society at large, but on the nation as a whole. Very often, the inability to assert independence seems to be inversely proportional to the degree of integrity. Like I have said before, not only must judges display competence and expertise, they must be above suspicion. We are by now familiar with the videotape of the correct, correct, correct <laughs> judicial scandal, but have we seen any action yet? And where judges are not seen to be absolutely above board, the establishment of equity and fair play in commercial and economic deliberations will be largely illusory. This would ex also explain why Malaysia continue to occupy dismal positions in the corruption index, not to mention how much further we have sunk in competitiveness. Another crucial criteria for the rule of law is the discretion of law enforcement agencies must, now, must not be allowed to pervert the course of justice. We know that not only the judiciary, but the police 
and the Attorney General's Office play essential roles in the preservation of the rule of law, failing which they are easily used to pervert the law. Selective prosecution, police high-handedness, and arbitrary arrests. And now, of course, the actions of the MACC all collectively serve to pervert the course of justice rather than uphold the rule of law. And in all these, the ruling AMNO government is, only, is not only complicit, but blatantly instrumental in perpetuating these gross transgressions. The upshot is harassment, oppression, and in most cases, the extermination of the small fry where the, while the large predators continue to roam free. The Pakatan Control Government of Selangor will remain a classic case study of the systematic abuse by federal law enforcement agencies under the thumb of the ruling federal clique. The arrogance of power has rendered them completely impermeable to public opinion. The extension of Musa Hassan, the extension of IGP's contract just last week flies in the face of the overwhelming chorus of objections from the people. The increasing incidences of custodial death and the blatant bias of the MACC in carrying out its duties are but two examples of this breakdown in the rule of law. Ladies and gentlemen, the very root of this problem goes to the question of accountability. Without accountability, these agencies literally get away with murder. They are certainly getting away with corruption. How much longer can we allow public financial resources to be used in complete disregard for the rules of accountability? In the final analysis, the idea of justice to man is so central to the rule of law that you can't have one without the other. Corruption and the abuse of public office, the absence of transparency in financial dealings, the perversion of justice by the law enforcement agencies, and the dereliction of judicial duty, these are indeed characteristics of the rule of men and not the rule of law. The trappings of democracy cannot mask this perversion. Reform is way overdue, but on the eve of our Malaysia Day celebrations, let us renew our commitment to freedom and justice. Terima kasih.